Hello there, it's David Howe here and I'm going to read you one of my short stories. It's called It Started With A Rose. Sarah was exhausted as she slumped her way across the office to her desk. Too many late nights. Sheesh. Come the weekend and I'm shattered, she thought. Then a weekend of housework and cooking, followed by Monday morning and it's back to the grindstone. 7.45am is not an earthly time to be at work. I wish, I wish, she thought, with all my heart that someone might remember my birthday and get me some flowers. As she approached her desk, Sarah saw that there was something sitting on it, something red and small. She realised it was a single red rose. Sarah picked it up. How sweet. Wonder who it's from. There was no way her boyfriend would ever do something like this unless he was feeling guilty. She frowned momentarily. Carl had no secrets from her, so someone else then. Her work colleagues started to drift in, stopping for coffee, chatting quietly. Normal Monday morning office life. And at eight o'clock, Sarah's phone rang. It was reception. Delivery for Miss Howard, said the receptionist. Sarah went down to reception to find two more roses waiting for her. She smiled and carried them back to her desk. Then at nine o'clock and ten o'clock and eleven o'clock, more calls, more deliveries. Sarah hurried down each time, wondering what was going on. More and more roses, four, then eight, then a beautiful bouquet of sixteen. Her desk area was now sweetly scented and she couldn't help smiling as her office colleagues looked curiously at her flowers as they passed by. At midday, Sarah was waiting downstairs when a man from the local florists arrived carrying two large bouquets of roses, 16 flowers in each. She accepted them and smiled sweetly at the doorman and asked if she might leave them in reception, as there really wasn't room at her desk. Leaning forward conspiratorially, the receptionist said, Birthday, is it, love? Sarah nodded sheepishly. Someone obviously thinks a lot of you, love, he said, before returning to his paper. Another four bouquets arrived at one o'clock, 64 roses in total. As two o'clock approached, Sarah was standing looking out the window as a large florist's lorry pulled up. She pulled out her mobile from her bag and rapidly dialed. Carl, yes, it's me. Yes, I'm fine. Listen, the flowers. Thank you so much for sending them. But enough's enough, don't you think? I have a pile here and I... What do you mean? What flowers? The flowers you're sending. As I say, they're really nice, but you haven't sent any flowers. Really? So who? What? Look, don't worry, I'll call you back. At three o'clock, Sarah was lurking in reception, pretending to read the notice board. Another 16 bouquets of 16 roses each were added to the 14 already there. The place was starting to stink. Two men were delivering the flowers, and as they turned, having placed the last of the new bouquets, Sarah hurried over. Excuse me, she said, smiling. Do you know who's sending all these flowers? One of the men, a stocky chap wearing a baseball cap, pushed the cap back and scratched his balding head. They for you, miss? he asked. No, no, said Sarah. I'm just interested. The man sniffed. As far as I know, it's a private customer. We're not told to send her. Just ask to deliver them, see? He held out a clipboard with a sheet on it. Sarah took a quick look and saw that indeed there was no sender listed, just her name and the office address. 34 red roses in two bouquets. Sarah thanked the man, sighed and returned upstairs. At four o'clock, Sarah was sitting in a coffee bar across the street from the office. She'd been racking her brain for who might be behind this, but to no avail. Further calls to Carl had produced no admission of guilt, and he just wasn't a good enough liar. So she sat and waited and watched. 32 more bouquets arrived, and 64 of them arrived at five o'clock. She counted them all as they were carried into her office while she nursed her now cold coffee. She became aware of someone standing at her arm. It was the waitress. You all right? she asked. Then she glanced out the window at what Sarah was looking at. They've been at that all day. Reckon they have some sort of do tonight. Why else would they want all those flowers? Sarah nodded absently 
and asked the girl if she would get her another coffee. When the waitress had gone, Sarah suddenly realised that she'd wished for someone to send her flowers that morning, and it had happened. But why? Why should her wish on this day come true? She often wished for things, new shoes, a holiday, a pay rise. Why should it work on useless flowers, but not on anything else? This was crazy. She had to stop it. Sarah closed her eyes and concentrated and wished with all her heart that she didn't have any flowers, that they would all be gone. She cracked open one eye, looked across the road. No vans. Leaving her drink, she crossed the road and looked into the reception area. No roses. Wow, it worked. Maybe this was her day, her special birthday. Maybe this was the day when her wishes actually came true. She smiled. Sarah Howard opened the door of her Porsche and sat in the leather seat. Her Prada-covered feet touched the pedals and the engine hummed into life. Now, who would she like to be waiting for her when she got there? Brad Pitt, perhaps? Or that hunky chap from IT? And how much money would she like in her bank account? Sarah felt that on this day, on this day of all days, that she had somehow beaten fate. And it felt wonderful. Thank you.